Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope you're having a solid week. Uh, it is late Friday night. I wanted to start this video and I uh, will finish it tomorrow. And uh, some of the topics that we're going to be talking about are eBay's upcoming earnings. I want to do a little bit of a deeper dive in the uh, gross merchandise value numbers and kind of look at what would be a failure in the upcoming earnings report. I, uh, yeah, I was looking at the, uh, I was watching the video that I recommended and uh, like on the last video I did for the uh, what happened to eBay uh, by, what was that channel's name? Sorry. Logically answered. And if I get to it, I want to go ahead and look at some of the comments on there. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have time in this video or not. So I want to do that. I'm going to answer a question. Uh, I'm going to start right there. And then we're going to get into some what solds. Uh, because there's some interesting stories. And I think there's some interesting things that I've sold through throughout this week. Uh, sales have been meh. It's, you know, it's not enough. It's not bad enough to be like the sky is falling, but it's certainly not, you know, it's, it is what it is. You know, eBay, eBay is kind of becoming, it is what it is kind of site, right? It's, you get sales, you don't get sales. They feel manufactured and, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where, I've kind of not actually even felt like talking about eBay this week. There's only so many things really to talk about with eBay. And, you know, the things that excite me the most about eBay are the products. It's about the things that I sell. And whether it's things that I appreciate and I want to have in my store, I look at my store as one big experiment, to be honest with you. I like selling certain items. I like selling rare. I like selling obscure. I like selling I like selling things that you wouldn't think to sell on eBay. Kind of like James, at my boring reseller life. He always, you know, he... <laughs> there have been videos in the past where I can tell his passion and he's like, he's literally like lifted up something and he has been like, who would have thought to, to, to sell this on eBay? And, and, like, he's very proud of that. And and I remember thinking at one specific time, I have one of those listed on eBay. Like, like it's that same kind of mentality. Yeah, I don't, I don't go out there. Like, I don't look at sell-through rates. I, I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna go out there and, uh, like, I'm gonna buy what I buy. And I'm either gonna sell it on eBay or I'm gonna sell it somewhere else. That's just, that's just who I am at this point in time. I'm I'm never going to fault people for what they sell. And if they want to criticize me about what I sell, there's nothing wrong with that either. It, it doesn't phase me. Because at this point, if I stopped selling the kind of items that I sell, and I went out and I found like high sell-through rate, that wouldn't be fun for me. And I don't... I, don't, I do eBay... So I don't have to have a job, if that makes sense. Like I've worked, I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I was doing some math in my head today, simple math. I have worked for myself since I was 24. I'm 48 now. I've literally worked for myself half of my life. Uh, and I don't plan on quitting that anytime soon. So, um... Yeah, and that, that's why I want to always continue to do what sold videos because I find the items, the most, yes, not all of them have a story or not all of them are interesting and those ones I just kind of gloss by. But whether it's something that I find interesting, whether it's something that surprises me that actually sold for a, a certain price, whether it's my logic and why I want to buy things and resell them, 
I, I find all of that interesting. And those are the kinds of videos that I enjoy watching. And those are the videos that I will continue to make. And I did a little bit of sourcing this week, but unfortunately I've already listed those items. And so I figure uh, you'll see them, you know, they're already in, they're already processed. You'll see them as they're heading out the door. Uh, the weather has been crap in Vancouver. Uh, I actually had to scale back my shipping from three to from one to three day shipping earlier at the beginning of the week because people in Vancouver do not know how to drive when the when there's any snow on the roads. But but this week was particularly bad because we had tons and tons of like ice and it was. There are some nut, nutty videos out there of pi like pi pile ups, not not like like not like more like bumper dinger, M more like like nobody was seriously injured, at least not the ones that I saw. But there are potentials for injuries, of course, and and but I mean these were like they, just cars they just couldn't stop, but they were like not going very fast. But it's really bad out there, is my bottom line. But I did get out to do a little bit of sourcing the beginning of the week and then uh i hadn't gone out of the house for i think three days and i listed all that stuff and i did go out today and picked up like a couple things but nothing nothing really worth worth showing so local sales have been non-existent this week just because nobody's going out of the house all right in the last video curious collection i believe it was them him her uh, that had asked how do I keep track of where do I list things because I was kind of outlining my plan and talking about the different websites that I list on eBay, District, Marketplace, Craigslist, Carrot. Um, am I missing any? I think that's it. I am looking for another place not like I need another place but I'm always looking if there's one out there i've tried kijiji it's horrible horrible uh, i tried a whole summer to sell something on there i never sold one thing on there uh, i have a friend in toronto he does great on kijiji but and and he tr has tried craigslist oh craigslist is the other did i say craigslist anyhow how do i keep track of of where i list things really i only need to keep track of eBay and district, to be honest with you. And what do I mean by that? And I haven't sold anything on district yet, anyhow, in case you're wondering. So it's not really that big of an issue. But if I've listed it on both, if, I, if I've if i listed it on eBay and I listed it on district, I'll put it in the SKU that it's on district and vice versa. Although district doesn't have a SKU, I just kind of put a little note inside the description that only I will know what it means, but... It's not rocket science. Someone else could figure it out as well. So if I sell it on district, I'll know to take it down on eBay and vice versa. Now, hopefully, hopefully at some point in the future, and I've only listed about 40 things on district, and I've tried to pick things that are kind of universally appealing to a wide number of people, really hoping to get some kind of like walk-by traffic in, in, in there. But, and um, yeah, so I'm hoping... Also, I'm hoping this year to kind of work on some strategies. You know, Jack and I, we've got some ideas. So, yeah. Now, if I sell something on eBay that I have listed, say, locally, I don't go and take it down right away. It's just, I don't really put that much importance on it. There's no penalty if somebody messages you on Craigslist about something that I still have up, but I've sold it. If that happens, uh, that's like a reminder. Oh, hey, sorry about that. I don't have that. But if you like, so what I do is, is I use this as an opportunity to be like, hey, sorry, don't have that anymore, but you might like this. So I, I use it as an opportunity. Now, the, the, the thing about Craigslist are you're basically listing expires after 45 days and then you have to kind of renew it facebook the same but the thing about facebook is you can do it in bulk you can do it like 20 30 40 listings at a time which is so much better than craigslist yeah. but facebook has its own issues for example i listed this adorable build-a-bear plush 
that has these, uh, you know, this is this would be for somebody who maybe was in an accent and you want to get them a plush. It, it's really cute. It's got the banded uh, headband. It even has like a band-aid. Now, I don't think I listed this on eBay. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I think I just listed this on Facebook, Craigslist, and Carrot. I made the mistake of putting, you know, Build-A-Bear, I think it's a spring frog is this one, with crutches, brace, headband, like kind of using keywords. It gets flagged. It says it's in violation of Facebook policies. They think I'm selling medical devices. I appeal it. It gets approved this time. Unlike the most recent thing that I listed on Marketplace, I can't even remember what it was. Um, it was har something completely harmless. I appealed it and they denied it. it I can't, I, I wish I could remember what it is. I might have even mentioned it in a previous video, but Facebook Marketplace has its own issues. It's, it's really bad. It's their AI is really out of control and the fact that you can't talk to anybody is preposterous. So I've actually had to open up another Facebook account. I'm using my wife's kind of like her kind of dummy Facebook account, but it's it has her name on it because that's the thing about Facebook is you can have as many accounts as you want, but they have to have your they has to be a real person it has to be your, your real name. So I'm just assuming eventually I'm going to lose. And here's the thing, I have a couple Facebook accounts uh, for Marketplace on, uh, under my own name. I don't know if they're linked. So when I first opened up, uh, opened up the second one, I thought, oh, if my first one goes down, I'll still have my second one. But I'm beginning to think that they're actually linked. And so if I lose one, I might lose them both. That's why I'm starting to just... From now on, I'm once I the thing about Facebook is once you open up a new account, you can only list one item a day, up for maybe like I don't know two or three weeks, and then after that, you're kind of unlocked and you can list as many as you want each day. So now I'm in the process of building that account up. I know it's a pain in the butt, but I do so well on Facebook that I can't afford to lose my marketplace over like stupid AI issues. <sighs> yeah. Anyhow. So again, so if I sell it on Facebook and I have it on Marketplace, it's the same thing. Either I'll catch it in the renewal, but I'm not going to take my time to go. Like if I sell something on eBay that I have listed on all my local all, all my local sites, I'm not going to like stop and go and remove them. I look at it like they're like little worms and they're out there. And, and even if I've sold it, they're still working. And then eventually I'll find them either when I renew them through Craigslist uh, after the 45 days, or if I just happen to randomly notice that it's up there and in my mind, I'm kind of like, oh, I, I've sold that. So that's kind of how I keep track of it. I really just mostly focus on the eBay and, and District, even though District, it's not really not much to even focus on. So if I were to sell something on eBay and I forgot to take it down on District, at this point, I'm not that super worried about it. Because it's not real, it's a, it's not really an income stream right now. I wanted to ask you guys something. Um, <laughs> this was this was a first for me. So this is called a, a universal lighting technologies multi kit with snap mount adapter plate. I have no idea what this is, but I had a first that happened to me. I, I want to show you guys. I listed this on Craigslist. And it was removed. Uh, let me see if I can take it out of here. I have no idea what it is. I've literally sold one of these on eBay. So this this is an example of something that I've sold on eBay. Um, I'll show you guys that in case. I'm hoping somebody out there knows what this is. I saw that it was removed and I'm like, that just seems odd. Like, did somebody flag it? I have no idea why. I tried listing it again. It was taken down, like literally within minutes. So I just listed it on eBay because I've already li I've already sold one before with no problems. I was just hoping to not have to sell it on eBay because it's actually over a pound. It's actually pretty heavy. 
Uh, I think the last one I sold was for like 18 or $19. I wish I would have just listed them together in one lot. This was before. I, I've had this for a while. I've had these for a while. I should have just done that. I think it was one of those cases where I listed it. I didn't really know the value. And then it got incrementally lower. And then it finally sold. Somebody paid for it. But yeah, I just found that extremely odd that Craigslist, of all places, took something down. Like, Craigslist is like the wild west of reselling. You can pretty much list just about anything on there. But that was taken down. So does anybody know what that is? Why that would be taken down? This is my Ask the Audience segment. All right, before I forget... I'm going to show one thing that I picked up because I was teasing Primo the other day about something I picked up. We were on the phone and uh, I know he's a big Snoopy fan. Now, I paid up for these, um, but they were in really good condition, although I just now saw a flaw or what I think is a flaw. But the actual... Oh, all right, so let me show you. So there's the first one. Snoopy posable figures. These are really old. They're from 1966. So here's this one. Now, the hat, I think, it's it's sewed on on this side. It's not on the other side. I don't, I'm assuming it was probably sewn on. Um, because it looks like there's some string there. So that's unfortunate. I did not catch that. Uh, but they're, they're, other than that, it's flawless. And it comes with the golf cart. And it has like the, uh, I don't know, like the clasp. Like they're, they're so clean. So I've, I got this one. And, um, <laughs> and then I got uh, a tennis player one. And then the tennis player one is, is the, the box, this box has, it's got some tape together. But the fact that it has the box, I mean, these are like, what, like over 50 some years old. Uh, this is the tennis player. Oops. Um, this dude's got... And these ears are posable. Like you can like, I don't I don't really want to play with them too much, but but you could like put them up. So, the, so he's got this. He's got the tennis racket. I'm not gonna put it in the hand. It's got the tennis racket, and then it's got the visors. And the visors are still sealed in the bag, which is that pretty awesome. Uh, they're like, they're just flawless. So I don't know. I couldn't, they weren't cheap thrift store standards, but I don't know when I was going to come across something like this again. And I mean, I've had, I've had good luck selling, uh, peanuts. There's always going to be a Snoopy fan and they're just too rare for me. I know I'm going to make money on them. Uh, and I wanted to buy them. I wanted to buy them so I can resell them. Just because, like I said, I don't know when I'm going to see another one in this condition. Uh, and, you know, the fact that there's two, it'll make it more appealing. Uh, one would be over a pound anyhow. So, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, Primo, if you have... So there's there's six of them. There's a roller skater, sailor, tennis player, baseball player, jogger, soccer player. Tennis player. Oh no, there's twelve. Uh, roller, roller skater. Nope, that's French. Wait, where's the golf? The golfers there. There must be more. Um, uh, maybe unless they're a second series. I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if you have one or one or 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 more of these. So here is a chart, well, not a chart yet. Here is some data 
that I had mentioned from the video that illustrates how in 2022, the annual gross merchandise volume, GMV, is 3 million less than it was in 2013, kind of illustrating the point that eBay is, you know, gone nowhere in the last decade. In fact, when you account for inflation, it's even worse. It's really bad. And it got me thinking, well, what is 2023 numbers? You know, like, so the earn the next earnings report for the fourth quarter comes out in a little over five weeks. I think it's scheduled to be February 28th. That could fluctuate a day, give or take a day. But so we got five weeks. So I, I got to thinking, well, what, what is the gross merchandise, the GMV for 2023 that we know of? I found this chart out there. And this, uh, I'll link, I found a website that has, let's see here. It's got tons of information. It's really good. It's got like Amazon's info, eBay's e-commerce, Walmart, Etsy, and Shopify. It breaks all these numbers down. You can, you can really kind of see some cool stuff. But this is the chart I want to focus on right now. So... It has the GMV for Q1, Q2, Q3. If you add those three numbers up, you get 54.61 billion. Now, the, the, the number that the fourth quarter has to beat, all right, to beat last year's 73.9 number is... Well, uh, eBay has to do over 19.29 billion. If it does that, it equals the GMV for 2022. And it probably will do that because I went I went back and I looked at all these numbers every from Q3 to Q4 there's every Q4 is higher than the pre than 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 Q3. So here it went up, here it went up, here it went up a little bit. But it it is on a downward trend. Now it'll probably, you know, so this is 18.4. So it would so this is 18, so 19 point so it's got it it it's gotta come to about here. And it 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 probably will. But if it doesn't, that's going to be, that's not going to be good because that's going to be another year that it's, the, the GMV is down from the previous year. And I would say if for some odd reason that, that this number uh, in Q4 is below this number right here, if this Q4 is below the this number, the Q3, that would be a massive fail for GMV. And I don't know, that could be enough to get the, the board thinking that current management is not does not have eBay on the right track. So I'm definitely gonna be curious. And then I think I'm gonna in a future video, I might look at the percentage of promoted listings i don't know we'll see i might look into that a little bit more and see how those numbers are going but ultimately promoted listings can only carry ebay so far like there's only so much that they can take from sellers and you know that we've talked about this ad nauseum but it's definitely a fascinating thing to watch the the earnings like especially because i mean i i've made it pretty known i'm not a fan of the direction that management has been taking eBay. I, I've been super critical of them, and I don't think their plan will work long term. But what do I know? All right, so we're going to start off on Maria's store. Uh, somebody bought this comic uh, for twenty four, including shipping, and he added this trade paperback to this order so i was able to upsell him and he paid 26 dollars uh and no additional shipping so i was able to add 
uh, let's do some math. So I was able to turn an $18 order into a $44 order. Um, all right, so these two pins sold for, I think these sold for $14 plus shipping. The, the little history bit I, I learned about these. So I had these as um, Kennedy, what did I say? Campaign buttons. And then somebody had messaged me and said, because these ones are black and white, it had to do with Bobby Kennedy's Remembrance Morning. And it wasn't too long after I changed that. Like, it's just some random eBay buyer or seller who, who knew their stuff just messaged me. This happens quite a bit. Uh, people, I think people just like to share their knowledge. And I'm appreciative of that when they do that, because obviously it helps me sell them quicker. So yeah, a lot of two in pretty good condition as well. Uh, this Beach Boys poster, uh, it had some wear. It had some creasings and, and some edge wear, but this sold for $40 shipped going to Ontario. Uh, the Starbucks Playlist uh, CD sold for $16, including shipping. It was sealed. Uh, these Starbucks, they, they put out these, you know, these collection of CDs. Uh, they sell. Um, I always try to keep an eye out for them. Uh, this this is this is an example of something that I'm kind of su kind of surprised sold for what it did. So these sold for twenty one dollars, including shipping. Uh, last was it last summer? Maybe it was the summer before last. I can't remember. I helped. I was helping one of um, our elderly neighbors move. She was moving back east to be with her family. She was getting rid of a ton of stuff. She gave me a like an old sewing machine. She's like, you know, donate it. And and I thought my my daughter would want it, but she, they, they had one that that they didn't that they didn't need another one. And it it came with all these all these old cool like sewing supplies. Um, I pulled a few things out that I thought would sell. For some reason, I I, I must have comped these. And saw that they sell, and these did sell for twenty-one dollars uh, shipped. No cost in these whatsoever. Uh, this World of Warcraft. Uh, this is like a preview comic. It's only, it's only eight pages long. Uh, that sold for twenty-one dollars, including shipping. Definitely a massive audience uh, for people who love World of Warcraft stuff. Uh, this, these are probably one of my favorite things in the world to sell. Patches. This sold for $24, including shipping. Um, I mean, what can you say? You put it in an envelope, mail it out. I've got tons of different kind of like patches. And, you know, they're they're slow sellers, but, but they sell. And they're very easy to ship. Uh, Go-Go's Button. This sold for $14, including shipping. Uh, pretty cool old vintage button. Uh, sold another one of the. I sold actually two of these this week. Uh, one I sold for 42 and one I sold for 44 So I'm not even going to show you the other one that sold. Uh, I, I have them. I keep upping the price on these. Like I, I sold one a couple weeks ago for 30 You know, when I, when I, I bought like, I don't know, I must have bought 30 of these at uh you know buck and a half each i just had a hunch that that they were gonna sell it was just one of those things i think i'm down to like maybe 15 left but uh yeah they seem i don't know if something's going on i know that some someone was one I, I think when i first comped them people were, were putting tiktok in the title i don't know if somebody did something on tiktok that made this particular plush popular i used to have tiktok in my title but I have since removed it. I don't. I don't know. I don't want to add something to titles that are that are going to get me in trouble. Uh, I don't know. It's just one of those things that you know. I try to be fiercely guarded when it comes to adding extra things to my titles that can get you in trouble. So um, I sold a Hello Kitty bag on the other store, which you'll see in a bit. 
and gave them my my you know email if you you know want to add anything and they picked this up uh we settled on a price of 29 and it's just just really old vintage garbage can from 1991 so you know 32 years old it was in phenomenally high grade and then i two little uh just two little kind of like keychain accessories or whatever you want to call it um yeah so this one was 29 including shipping now the interesting thing about this was this was in a lot of other hello kitty stuff and i started to look at that lot and i i'm like you know what i'm gonna break it up a bit uh because it's a little too heavy and uh so i basically just kind of my intent was just to put this up for 35 or for 30 or 30 like 30 but then I literally found these this week um like I paid a dollar for them both and they're both old they're both from let's see here they're both from 1997 so I don't know there's always going to be a Hello Kitty fan and the fact that they were in such high grade condition and they were, you know, over 25 years old. I just thought that they would make like a nice little addition to a current listing. And I was able to do so. The the other the person bought a bag. and uh, I think it was like 30. So, you know, I basically turned a $30 order into almost a six, almost doubled. And, and the buyer was super cool. You know, I had this listed for 35. He asked me can you do between 25 and 28? I came back to him. So I, I said, let's do 27. I said, it's going to cost my shipping and handling will go up a little bit. And it, it will go up a couple bucks. And then he came back to me. He's like, let's just do 29. So it's like, I just thought that was cool. I'm like, awesome. I'm like, done. I'm like, make the offer. I'll zero out the shipping and I'll put them both in a package and ship them out to you on Monday. Two more sales, these Green Goblin. I always thought Green Goblin was a pretty cool villain. Probably one of my one of my favorite villains for Spider-Man. Him and um Me Mephisto? No. The dude that had the uh bubble there was like a mist. I can't picture I can't think of what his character name is. Oh well. Um, so yeah, these over 22 going to England, uh, there, there's nothing special about these books. These are all pretty cheap books. And then this toque was $19, including shipping. I literally, well, we say toque, we, we, uh, in Canada, they call these toques, uh, in the States. I mean, I just always call them like a winter hat, st stocking cap. All right, this sold last week, and somehow it slipped through the cracks of things that I want to share with you. It only sold for uh, $16, including shipping. But I just thought it was so funny that, that like, look at my title. Samsung Television Remote Control Pre-Owned Works. I couldn't find any, uh, like unit like uh number like normally remote controls will have like a like a part number couldn't find anything on it couldn't use uh, i used google search couldn't find it so i'm like okay well i'm just gonna put it up and it actually didn't sell in if it sold pretty quick if, if it was in q uh i'm up to d1 i've probably listed this in beginning of summer just based on where I'm at now in my inventory. So I just, I thought that was comical. Uh, this is a Monster High. This is like a castle replacement part. I basically got a castle for free. Someone was throwing it away. It was incomplete and I didn't want to sell it like as a cap. It's really big. And every once in a while I'll break off different parts and, you know, just kind of give them a wipe down and throw them up. Monster High, another franchise that people, you know, there's lots of buyers out there. Um, I, I thought they had they even had these little locks. They sold for $22, including shipping. And I still have lots more of the castle to break down. 
So, you know, if you don't want to sell something big, you can break it down. You know, people always need parts to different things. This is an Hello Kitty bag uh, that the person, they originally bought this and then they added uh, the other, uh, the garbage, the little, it's like a mini garbage can. So yeah, decent little sale. It's a nice little bag, brand new. Uh, these are prints. They, there's two of them. They sold for $90, including shipping. Uh, ironically enough, these are of Vancouver. Had them listed locally. And so I believe this one's False Creek. Sid no, City Lights. And that one's just, I think that one's gorgeous. Um, yeah, someone in Connecticut bought them. I thought for sure I would be able to sell those locally, but nope. Uh, this is a Young Living Orb Diffuser. Nothing special about that. I picked up three of these at a garage sale. This sold for $26, including shipping. Uh, this comic um, sold for $35 plus shipping. Uh, so this is part of a... Let's see, where is it? A guy bought this... I don't even... Yeah, I'm not familiar with... Actually... I sold something. I sold a God Mard's sword months ago. So I guess this is in the same line. Uh, he bought this and then he added this uh, magazine uh, for no additional shipping on that for $9. So he, he paid $15 for the one and then added this for $9. Uh, this is just a set of uh, comics. These sold for, I believe they it was... Uh, I think it was $16 including shipping on this one. I think I accepted an offer. Uh, this Hello Kitty, uh, I was beginning to think this guy wasn't going to pay, uh, but he did. I mean, this is super adorable. It's not brand new, but it was very clean. And it was, I think it was pretty old, 2009. I guess it's not too old, but this sold for 30, uh, $36 including shipping. Just a couple old books. These these sold for fourteen dollars, including shipping. Got these uh, at that massive book haul over the summer. You saw that sold this set for sixteen dollars, including shipping. Uh, this is uh, just a ear flat winter hat. And uh, this guy wanted just I can't remember. I wanted one of these. I think it was this one. Uh, he offered twenty nine dollars plus shipping which I thought was more than fair given so he's actually offering more than half. Uh that's a no-brainer for me when it comes to I don't I have no problem breaking up things. Uh this book sold for $10 plus shipping. And then the last thing I believe this is the last thing. Um all right, so I got a story to share with you. I sold this just Disney peas in a pod for $16 including shipping. Made the mistake of showing it to Maria. She was like, I want it. I want it for my grandchild. And I'm like, I've already sold it. And I'm like, she's like, I don't care. I want it. And I'm like, well, there's nothing I can do. I'm like, we're just going to have to wait and see if he doesn't pay. And I will be damned if he did not pay. And it was funny because this one sold and the Hello Kitty one sold at the same time. This dude had 835 on his, you know, that little number. The Hello Kitty person had two. I would have bet anything that the Hello Kitty person would have been the one that didn't pay. I've actually had, I've had a fair number. I've had more people, more non-payers in the last two and a half, three weeks than I've probably had in the last six months or more. I just... I don't get a lot of non-payers, but I think I've had like five. It's It's been nuts. I, I don't really understand it. Uh, maybe people are getting their credit card bills and like, okay, I, you know, I can't pay that. I can't buy that thing I just bought on eBay yesterday. But yeah, she, uh, she manifested this into reality. I was able to, to, to cancel the sale after four days. I literally did it like within 10 minutes after the the four days was up because I did want to pull it down it brought her so much joy to she's like I I gotta have this I gotta have this and I'm like okay I'm like 
Yeah. All right, guys, it is now Saturday and I've got three sales I'm gonna quickly show you. And then I actually spent a little bit time today while watching the, the football game, which I was not happy with the outcome. I was rooting for the underdog. Would have been nice to have that rookie story, of young quarterback going into Baltimore and beating and beating the Ravens, but that did not happen. Um, so while I was watching the game, I was going back and getting all the data, all the earnings for promoted listings each quarter back, all the way back to 2018, which is essentially when they st started first mentioning promoted listings in their earnings reports. And I'm going to share with you what I found. It's pretty interesting. I think it's pretty interesting. And uh, before we do that, let me just show you the three sales that I've had today. Uh, all For three sales, about 95 bucks. I'm all in it for like a buck and a half. I mean, this this remote control, this serious remote control, this sold for uh, 31 Yeah, 31 plus shipping and handling. I think I paid 50 cents for it. Um, it's Game of Thrones. This is a variant. Uh, this is, uh, so it's more rare. This sold for $35 including, uh, plus shipping. I sent out an offer. He countered. I accepted. And then I sold these, uh, these cap bomb refills. There's three packages of these in them. And they're all sealed. And then this... Uh, this this is like the plastic thing is off of it, but it's it's brand new. I got these for free at a garage sale. They just had like a free box uh, over the summer, and I literally just listed them within a week ago. They were upstairs in in my old filming room, which will probably be my 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 back to filming there at some point. Coming soon. I can only send Maria upstairs for so many times. And yeah, I, I just listed them and they sold in a week. Um, I went to a garage sale. They didn't have anything. Their stuff was overpriced. Uh, so I glanced in their free box and they had these. So I'm like, you know, I didn't know if they would sell. But this is the company Schilling. S-C-H-Y-L-L-I-N-G. So yeah, thirty. Th those sold for thirty bucks plus shipping and handling, uh, free money. All right. So I do have a local sale that's coming tomorrow to pick up this head candy twisted disco. It's like a wooden print. Um, this is selling for twenty five dollars. Uh, I picked it up for uh, I want to say five at a at, at a thrift store. And I thought it would sell for more than that. I've had it. I've had it probably for I don't know eight months. And um, so the buyer contacted me earlier in the week, and he couldn't really get here, so he's going to pick this up tomorrow. Uh, and I also sold a uh, pull-up bar, like I had an extra, and uh, that sold for fifteen. That sold. That sold about a week ago. I just had forgot to talk about it. This is actually my second pull-up bar that I've sold. I don't know why I had three. Uh, and then I still have mine. But, um, okay, so in a minute now, I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to show you. Uh, I did plot on a on an Excel spreadsheet <clears throat> the, um, the profit in millions that eBay has been reporting for promoted listings. They started mentioning promoted listings in 2018. Promoted listings have been around since 2015. But they first mentioned promoted listings in quarter three of 2018 and all they say there is that they have 400,000 active listing active members using and that they it accounts for 160,000 listings and then in Q4 of 2018 they say that the company experienced nearly 150% revenue growth in promoted listings with 600,000 active sellers promoting 200 million listings. 
So it grew by 200,000 active sellers from Q3 to Q4 of 2018, and it grew by 40,000 listings. And then in the first quarter of 2019, they say, in advertising, eBay grew promoted listing placements and eligibility. It grew to 800,000 active sellers. So basically, it was going up 200,000 each month, each quarter, promoting over 200 million listings. So they just said promoting over. And uh, this drove revenue up to 65 million. So this is the first time that they actually put a number to how much they're making on promoted listings. This is the first quarter of 2019. Now this was well, this was weird. In two th in the second quarter of 2019, there's no mention of promoted listings whatsoever. None. And it's it's very weird. It's very weird. And then in two in the third quarter, it, they they mentioned that there it, it grew to 103 million up 119 percent and they, they they say that more than a million one million sellers this is what they say more than one million sellers now leverage promoted listings promoted over promoting over 300 million listings on their marketplace which has resulted in 103 million up 119 percent on an as reported basis so the the numbers that I'm going to show you, and, I, and, and, and this is where the chart starts, the third quarter of 2019, and it will plot the amount of money in millions that they make each quarter, and then it will plot the percentage that they make on an as-reported basis. I don't exactly know what that means, so let's flip around and see what, uh, what we can determine. All right, so here we are. This was the last figure that I gave you in the third quarter, 2019. This was the last mention. So in the Q in Q4, it goes up to 136 million, up 73 percent. They no longer mention anything about how many sellers are leveraging in air quotes, <laughs> leveraging promoted listings and they no longer mention how many listings are being affected which i would be fascinated to know what that number is now i'm curious as to why they stopped reporting that so obviously in 20 in 2020 with covid we saw large increases so, so it went from 136 to 137 which is nothing but it increased the promoted listings were up 109 percent a big jump in profit in the in the second quarter of 2020 to 196 up 120%. And then there was a dip down. Uh it was only up 186 million and then 70 it was down 79% up 215. And you can see it's cruising. Let's see here. I'm just trying to see if there's anything I wanted to note. You can see so in the uh the, you know Q2 of 2021 it was up 224 million. Now you're obviously going to see bigger numbers in the beginning and then the percentages go down but as you can see after a few small dips the percentages I mean, i'm sorry the uh the actual percentage of the how much it makes each quarter and promote pr promoted listings will start to go up now what i want to mention in the uh 2022 first quarter right here they did 222 million. This is the only quarter that promoted listings had a negative percentage growth. But this is also the first quarter that they start reporting the total. So they did 222 million this quarter in promoted listings, but they also obviously have other ad revenue, advertising revenue. That they that they do, and that the, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into all of those numbers. I have it, but the total advertising was 267 million. So there was like another 38 million in 
you know, you know, there's a, there's a number of different services. I know they're promoted listings. You know, there's advanced, dynamic. Now we have offsite, uh, whatever, whatever made up that other thirty eight seven that thirty eight million to total two hundred sixty seven. They started reporting this number. 1.4% is the total amount of that they factor that in of their gross. Let me let me let me find out how they word it. Okay, so this is how they worded it. The company's total advertising offerings generated approximately 267, whereas the promoted listings was 222. So they're saying that it represents roughly 1.4% of GMV. Now, this is an important number because in the previous video, I linked a video that, and I talked about this earlier in this video, where it shows how the GMV of eBay is essentially going down. It's, it's, it's flat from where it was for the last decade. And it's actually even more flat now due to inflation and when you factor in that 10 years ago, 100% of their GMV was coming from the sale of items on eBay. Now this number will continue to go up. Um, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna do a spoiler alert because I don't have this plotted on the on the on the on the graph. But essentially, in the last third quarter, it's it's been going up. So it went from 1.4 to 1.8, down to 1.6, 1.7, 2, and 2. Those are all those are all the last two, three, four, seven, the last six quarters. So as it stands in the last earnings report, two percent of the GMV is coming from promoted listings. Let that sink in for a minute. Two now, it's going to be interesting to see what that number is in the uh, Q4 earnings report. I have to believe it's gonna go up. I speculate it's gonna be 2.2. That's what I'm thinking it's gonna be. And as this number goes up, I equate what eBay is doing. <laughs> I equate what Michael Scott, I, I mean, Jamie Ioni is doing is pouring concrete in the eBay sandbox. They're essentially taxing sellers and this is where they're getting this this is what eBay has become. This is what eBay this is how the, the biggest growth division of eBay is taxing its sellers. This is unsustainable and like I said, that sandbox that that we all like to say is eBay sandbox that we play in, it is going to become unplayable if they continue to focus their efforts in trying to see how much, how, how high of a percentage they can get this percentage of GMV of their total advertising offer, offerings generated. So let's go back to the chart. You can see here, um, let's see, 2022 second quarter. It went from 222 to 276, and then there was a dip, 249. Another dip in, in what they earned, and then this is the accelerating ramp up. So you can see, so from Q4 of 2022 to 2023 Q1. Q1 is the problem when the proverbial crap hit the fan with eBay. They did something. And and we all talk about April 1st as being like that 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 D-day, that day of reckoning when they, you know, essentially broke search, you know, scaled back, throttled our sales, whatever you want to call it. It's it started, it started really sometime in here when they decided you don't go from 227 to now we're at 345 million. But it's it is this was not this actually this number surprises me if you think about it from Q2 of 
2023 to Q3, their promoted listings earnings revenue only went up $4 million. That is really surprising to me. When you think about all the stuff that we've talked about and how promoted listings has affected and how people seem to, you know, be promoting at the, you know, especially with the daily suggested ad rate continuing to climb. I'm really, I, I find this to be a failure from, from what they're doing. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Q4 number is in, and I'll update this, um, how the ad revenue goes up and what that percentage of GMV from the advertising revenue, what that percentage accounts for. So in conclusion, you know, the sales have been meh. Um, it's, it's, when I look at my, the start of this month and compare it to January of 2022, 2023, man, all these, I'm tired of looking at dates today. Um, I'm down significantly on my account. Uh, Maria's account, it's only down a couple percentage points. It feels like it's worse, but, uh, you know, if, if we believe the stats, uh, you know, the stats don't lie, but, uh, but my account is down significantly. And January is normally my best month of the year. So something again, feels off. Um, and, and a lot of people seem to be reporting that. Uh, so, you know, I've just kind of been taking it easy. You know, I've been focusing on listing. I've been focusing on just getting away from like watching uh, reseller content for a while because there's at the end of the day, there's only like so much we can talk about. And, um, you know, I find that I just wanted to kind of like catch up on some things that I've been watching. Like this week I watched uh, Kill Bill. Um, and I don't think I had ever watched volume two, which kind of blows my mind because I'm a big Quentin Tarantino fan. Well, I, I was a Quint, big Quentin Tarantino fan, and then he just hasn't really, um, put anything out for a long time. And, uh, so I, I did watch volume two, uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to watch, I think I'm going to watch the hateful eight tonight. Uh, there's a few of his shows that I haven't, that I have never seen. So I think I'm going to try and complete, uh, you know, he's only done nine films, if you count vo uh, Kill Bill as one volume, which actually surprised me when I when I was looking up uh, all the different films. In my mind, it seems like he's done so many more. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch up on that. Uh, let me know if you guys uh, are watching anything cool. I do want to share something else. This is totally unrelated to anything. Um, Maria, she was in Portland visiting her her brother, the other day and she came back and she brought this thing called ginger coconut milk and she she told me about it when she was there and she's like this is like the best thing that I've ever had and you know I, I remember thinking okay it doesn't sound that good let me tell you what if you like coconut milk and you like ginger this is like the best thing ever it's made by a company called Prince of Peace I'm hoping we can find it here somewhere in Vancouver because it is phenomenal. So yeah, I just want, I mean, I know this is random, but I like to share things that, that I enjoy and that stuff is amazing. And, and, and if you, you know, if you were sick, it would taste good as well. Uh, it tastes, it's, it's not too sweet. It's just, it's, it's, it's weird because you taste it. Initially it tastes like you taste the coconut milk. And then when you're done drinking, the ginger, you feel the ginger on your throat. It's just, it's amazing. So yeah, I, that's it for today. And um, hope your guys' sales are doing well. And, you know, uh, Jack and I, we are, we're testing something new, right? Uh, and Kevin, we're testing something new, Stoic. Um, and if we get any kind of results, uh, we will share that with you. And uh, it's probably going to take two to three weeks to know if anything is, is changing. It's, uh, I don't expect it to be anything. It's not like the eBay reset or anything. It's not like that, but you know, in, in, it's not like the old days when you can just kind of like, just list, it's just list, 
you know, source, list. It's the hoops that eBay makes us jump through these days. It's it's pretty ridiculous. I'm I'm kind of over. I'm kind of over it. I, I I don't know why I went down this rabbit hole of promoted listings, but I did kind of want to see when they started reporting and if I could find any clues. So if you guys notice anything in this data in the charts um, that you find interesting, definitely let me know. Um, I can share the link with anybody who wants wants it if if you if you're interested in it. Um, but uh, yeah. If you've watched this long, uh, please kindly hit that thumbs up. Do all the things. Feed that YouTube algorithm. And peace and blessings, guys. And we will talk to you soon.